All right, so right now we're gonna be looking at a $100 budget tablet. This is the Dragon Touch X80. It's actually $90 if you wanna get technical here. I'm gonna skip the whole dramatic intro thing and just get right into the part that you actually care about, which is my actual thoughts on this after having used it for a while now. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna take a look at this tablet. And the first thing about this that I wanna point out is that it has a glossy plastic back. If you are getting this tablet for aesthetics, I would look somewhere else because while it looks beautiful the second you take it out of the box by some people's standards, this glossy plastic, very, very quickly becomes a very smudged, gross looking back. This is plastic, it looks cheap, it gets fingerprints, it's gonna get scratched. Just wanna get that out of the way right at the beginning here. Basically everything you need on this tablet is right here at the top. You have your power, your headphone jack, your micro USB, mini HDMI, a reset switch, and a back button. Now don't worry about the reset switch, you do need a little pin to get in there and you're not gonna accidentally hit it. It also has a slot for a TF card, which I wish I could tell you how much it sports up to, but the instruction manual only says to use a compatible SD card. I would assume 32 gigabytes is where it's capped, you might get away with the 64, but I highly doubt that this is gonna be able to support you 128 gigabytes. We'll get into the camera a little bit more later. I wanna talk about the actual usability of this. And one thing that I really think that is lacking is physical buttons, okay? So on the top, you do have your power button, which will turn it on and then you have a back button, but all your other buttons are buttons down here, including your volume. There's no volume buttons, which I don't know what they were thinking because when I'm watching a video full screen on YouTube or Netflix, I don't wanna to have to exit out of full screen to get to these little buttons here at the bottom to be able to adjust my volume. I wanna just hit a button on the side, a nice tactile thing. Plus then if you put it in your pocket, something I wouldn't recommend, but it can work if you have large enough pants, then you'd be able to adjust the volume without pulling the tablet out, turning it on and then adjusting the volume from there if you're listening to music. We're running Android 6.0.1, which is great seeing a budget option like this. We have a 7.87 inch screen running at a resolution of 768 by 1024, one gigabyte of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. We have a four core ARM Cortex A53 running at 1.34 gigahertz. Each core is independently running at 1152 megahertz, and our GPU is a Mali 400 MP. If you know what that is, then that was extremely helpful to you. If you don't, Stay tuned for the review. I'll kind of walk you through how this performs in the real world. And so now we'll talk about the camera and it is absolute garbage. Honestly, I don't feel like I need to say much more about this. This camera is really nothing to brag about. I'm gonna read off some specs here. Your rear facing camera and your front facing camera, which are actually the same camera, that should be a hint that they're not gonna be very good. It is 1.9 megapixels, measuring a resolution of 1600 by 1200. Your video resolution is going to be 0.5 megapixels, so you are going to have an 800 by 600 resolution, which is a four by three aspect ratio, so if you're filming to put on a widescreen screen, then you're gonna have those bars on the side. There is no stabilization. I'd really strongly recommend not using it since the resolution is already so low. No flash, and there's, there's very little control over the settings of the camera. But realistically, if you're buying a budget tablet, you're not buying it for the camera, so so we're gonna hope that you can look past that in this case. If you were planning on using this for photography, don't. If you're planning on using it for a Skype call, you can probably get away with it since a lot of people are using their really low resolution laptop cameras anyways, but otherwise I would definitely not get this if you wanna use the camera on it. And chances are your smartphone already has a camera that's almost infinitely better than this, so it's honestly just, don't use the camera on this, please. Another small gripe I have about this is that it does have slow load times. Um, for one, it takes about a minute for the tablet to turn on from being off, which isn't a huge deal because once it's on, you'd think it'd be okay. But if you have it in the lock screen and you press the power button, it actually takes a few seconds for the screen to turn on there. Could just be me being really picky, having used some really high-end devices. And I think that's something they have to help with their power management on this. It's some sort of feature that's shutting off other things when it's in lock screen. And so therefore, when you're pressing the power button, it takes a little bit longer to turn on. I haven't figured out how to disable this and I'm not sure that I want to. But that does lead me into battery life, which I do find to actually be surprisingly decent on this. It's gotten me through a whole day of use. You can watch a couple hours of videos on this. Nothing spectacular, obviously. It'll definitely get you by for a little bit. But not only does this have a slow turn on time, this has slow load times in general. When you're opening an app, it'll definitely take longer than your average smartphone does to load something, which if that's something that you're willing to deal with, then that's totally okay, because once it's loaded, most apps run fairly decently. If you're willing to wait around for a few extra seconds while your apps are loading, then this probably shouldn't be a big deal for you. But this is definitely not a multitasker. Considering that this only comes with 916 megabytes or one gigabyte of RAM, I think that you're really gonna have some trouble if you're one of those people who has many, many apps running in the background. I would limit it to no more than two at once. On the plus side though, this does have 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, which once you've actually turned it on, you have 24.87 that you can actually use. And I think that that's more than enough for a lot of people with tablets because a tablet, you don't need like everything that you're gonna have on your your phone per se. For me personally, I use tablets just for browsing social media and checking my email. 
and for that, 30 gigabytes can be totally fine. One thing that I would like to say is this is running Android, and I think that that is a fantastic idea for the makers of this. I've taken a look at some budget, like $100 Windows tablets, and they are absolutely atrocious. They, they can't run the software, it's just too heavy, it takes up all the storage space. Android really doesn't take up much storage space, it's light on the operating system, and so it still allows a budget tablet to be able to run decently, which I think is great. Right out of this box, this really doesn't have much bloatware, which is fantastic. The, the only thing that I thought was a little interesting was that it came with a user manual app, which I do prefer to waste paper over a user manual, although they did still include a user manual in the box. But on the chance that you lose that, and you really really need to know how to do something on here, I think that's gonna be good for you. Although I did find the manual to be somewhat self-explanatory, that could just be me being experienced. Though. It tells you things like how to charge it, and yeah. The app is nothing special, it's a f it's an app that opens up a PDF that's just showing you how to do basic functions with the tablet. And unfortunately this app can't be uninstalled, but it can be disabled. So if you want to get it out of your little app launcher, then you can. Another thing I noticed is that it automatically turns on low power for you if your power gets down to 15% or more, and it can be turned off. So don't worry about that. It's not going to force you to do anything once you're at low battery. You can still take pictures or do whatever you need to do with this, which I always think is a plus. I hate when companies choose to restrict your access once your battery is low. The launcher is very, very basic, which honestly I think is a good thing. If you're looking for a clean, authentic Android experience, then this is going to be perfect for you, because this is like pretty much the most basic form of Android you can find. And if you want something more advanced, you can just go ahead and install something like Nova Launcher, and then you can have all those extra features that you want. And so that's fantastic. Although I did find it strange that it didn't let you delete pages that if they had an app on it. So if you have extra pages on your home screen and there's an app on it, then it won't let you delete it. If you wanna get rid of the page, you have to move all the apps off the screen, then it'll automatically delete it. Now I'd like to talk about the screen, which honestly I like. That's one of my favorite things about this tablet. It's an eight inch screen, which is actually more like seven and a half, give or take. It has a resolution of 768 by 1024, which is a good resolution. You're gonna be able to watch things in H 720p HD. Although if you're watching it in 16 by nine aspect ratio, then you aren't gonna be able to get 720p because you have black bars on the top and bottom. This comes out to be 162 DPI and the viewing angles on the screen are absolutely fantastic. A lot of these cheap tablets will claim to have IPS screens when in reality, the viewing angles are so terrible. If you, you move the tablet just a little bit away from your face, everything is like inverted and it looks terrible. However, with this, you, you can do all this rotation and right now you're seeing glare from the lights I have in here. But the colors stay the same and you can actually see pretty much everything that's on the screen no matter where you're looking at it from, which is great. I love that. And the size of the tablet is one thing that I like. I always think that the 8-inch tablets are pretty much the perfect size, and this is great because you can hold it in one hand if need be. I've always found it to be the happy medium between enough screen real estate and just excessively large for a tablet. Tablets should not be 13, 14 inches. That's insane. And now let's talk benchmarks. On my 3D Mark test, this was actually incompatible with Slingshot, so I wasn't able to run this. Ice Storm Extreme test in our 3D Mark got a score of 1899, which is not particularly great. During the first graphics test, we had an average of 7.7 .7 frames per second. Second one was an average of 6.1. And then our physics test had 25.4. Keep in mind that this test is meant to push lower end devices to their absolute limits. What these numbers tell us is that the GPU in this, which is your graphics processing unit, is severely underpowered. If you're trying to play intense games, you're really gonna be out of luck. But the CPU is fine since in our physics test, we actually did significantly better. So if you're playing simple games like Flow or Doodle Jump, something, that's very, very basic on the graphics, then I think you're gonna have fine. You can, this is definitely great for those lobby games, as I like to call them. And going further into CPU, something that you might be more familiar with is Geekbench. So we have a single core score of 494 and a multi-core score of 1288, which is certainly nothing remarkable. The, this can get blown out of the water by modern smartphones, but the, the thing to focus on here is the price, is that this is coming at $100, while these smartphones that can do so much better are $700. And if you're looking at this, you're not looking for the top-of-the-line tablet. Top-of-the-line tablet is going to be something much, much more expensive. And so now I'm just going to kind of talk about the, the strange things I noticed with this tablet. When, when you're buying the budget Chinese tablets, you're always going to find some quirks with them that you can't really explain. One thing I noticed that I couldn't really reproduce on camera very well was the touchscreen calibration seemed to be slightly off. I noticed that sometimes when I would click something, it would click a little bit below where I thought I was clicking. Perhaps this is just the way that my brain is wired. It, it certainly wasn't every time, but when trying to click something precisely, I found it a little bit difficult and I had to go a little bit above it. It's not a big deal and I'm sure that if I were to sit down and use this as my only device, I would definitely be able to adapt to that. Another thing is that the speakers have a really high noise floor, which I found peculiar. So essentially what that means is that you have background noise when they're playing something. And so the, the best way I found to represent this is if you actually turn the system sound all the way down and you click one of the on-screen buttons, which would typically produce a sound, 
you get a hissing sound from the speakers, which I tried to record here, although it didn't really come out that well. When you're using this and doing something intense, it's gonna get a little bit hot up by the camera here, which I'm assuming that this is right where your CPU is. That's something to keep in mind. It, it's not a big deal, it's just noticeably warm. And so the last thing I want to address about this is since I try to make my reviews extremely honest, I do have to say that the first one of these that I got died. Now allow me to explain a little bit before you get turned off here. What I had done with this tablet is that I was running some intensive stuff on it and the battery on it died which I didn't think was a big deal, and I tried to charge it by plugging it into a quick charger on my power bank, and it, it flashed on for a second, and then it went away, and then my power bank also shut off. After that, I tried plugging this into everything, and I couldn't get it to charge. In fact, anything I plugged into would shut off. I tried multiple power banks. A power, the entire power strip would shut off if I plugged this into it. And so I was really confused because I hadn't seen anything like this. So I, I contacted Tablet Express. They're absolutely fantastic with their customer service. I've dealt with them several times, and immediately, right, as soon as they heard that I was having a problem with this, they didn't even question it. They just told me to send it back, and they had shipped me out a new one that got here two days after I sent the email, which they really didn't have to do. They could have shipped it out for a week, but they paid for two-day shipping, which was really nice of them, and I appreciate that. And I think that that level of customer service really speaks for itself. They're so great, and they, they really they make you feel wanted, that your purchase really matters to them, and that they want you to be happy, and that's a great feeling to have. And again, I'm not saying that the previous thing was a fault of the tablet that I had gotten. It could have been a fault with my power bank. It could be because I tried to plug it into Quick Charger. I would like to say I let the second one die, and I then plugged into the same charger, and it did start up okay, so it might have just been a strange factory defect. To my knowledge, there are no other cases of this tablet doing that, so it could just be my horrible luck. And so that's going to wrap up my review. I guess ultimately now it's up to you. So if you think that the pros on this outweigh the cons, then I would say go for it. This is a great budget tablet. I'll definitely be using it personally, since it really does meet a lot of my specifications for what I see as a perfect tablet. The only thing that I would like to see in it is perhaps a little bit more speed. But again, with speed and build quality, you're going to be paying a higher price premium. So is it worth it to you? You can be paying upwards of $400 for a tablet to get something that's absolutely great and fantastic. Or you can pay $90 and get something that just gets the job done. And I think ultimately that's what it comes down to is what you're going to be using this for. And so to keep myself from rambling on any longer, I'm going to end the review here. Before we click away, I know that this is one of those cliche ending things in a YouTube video. Since I am a smaller channel, if you enjoyed the format of my reviews, the, the way that I present my message, I would really, really appreciate it if you could just leave a like or subscribe. And I know that's just typical to say you don't have to. You can comment constructive feedback or rude feedback. I've gotten that too. I do look at what you say. I respond to your questions that you may have. If you have a specific question, you can just post it in the comments. You can say, Simon, how well does this run Minecraft? And I can put it up on here and I'll tell you. Anyways, enough rambling. If you'd like to watch my unboxing this, you can click right here. If the background behind me just reversed, that means I pointed to the wrong corner. Also, you can check out some of my other videos. I will probably be comparing this tablet with my previous favorite budget tablet, which is about a $40 tablet, and we'll be seeing the, the differences and what you actually get for your money and the difference there. If you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. And if you watch this video all the way to the end now, thank you so much. That really means a lot. You're great.